Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, I am rejoicing. I was just speaking with uh, Uncle Sherman, and we were just talking about um, the elevation work. Um, I, uh, at elevation worship, I shall not want. And I am just um, on cloud nine right now. This is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. Um, my name is Tiger Newman. I'm the proud pastor of Friendship United Methodist Church. We are so glad to be back here in the sanctuary. Yes. Just one more time. We may be few, but we have, uh, Sister Julia has already declared that the presence of the Lord is in this place. Mm -hmm. I know that there are a number of us who are already logged in online. So with that said, I will turn this over so that we can um, open up uh, in prayer. Good morning, members of friendship. Good morning, members of friendship, and every and everyone else online this this morning. I just want to take this time to to thank to thank everyone for participating with us this morning, and which which you have uh, happy Valentine's Day and this. Pray that you're prepared to listen, listen and prepare a, a word from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. We just thank you for all that you have done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Lewis, for that wonderful prayer and open this up. Um, before we begin, um, we are in the first uh, Sunday of February. So at this point in time, I would like to um, acknowledge all those who have been uh, gifted and, and blessed to be born in the month of February. Um, so if, if you're uh, born in February, I know we're going to have a slide to um, show all the people's names, but feel free to put in the chat your, uh, your name and the date you were born. You ain't got to get a year, but uh, we just want to... <laughs> celebrate with each and every, uh, there it is, each and every person that has been born in the month of February. It looks like, it looks like we got three people born on February uh, 14th, um, Tristan Dixon, um, Ursula Norbert, and Jackie Stansberry. That's the, that's the holy trifecta right there. So uh, when you're getting the uh, chocolates um, and, the, and the flowers for, for, for the significant others, make sure you lift up a few prayers for our all of our sisters that have been born on February 14th. Um, we also have uh, Brother Reggie Stansberry, he born on the 16th, um, Sister Teresa Dixon, and uh, Brother Joe. Brother Joe is uh, was born on February 26th. So again, we acknowledge all our February birthdays, and I believe as we uh, celebrate the February birthdays, we got a birthday song, amen? And uh, uh, my good, uh, I see in the chat, uh, my good brother from Philly, uh, uh, Brother Joel Bounds, he reminded me, um, and again, I didn't know he was going to be on, brother, so it wasn't um, because I forgot, but my goddaughter, uh, Zara Bounds, is also born on February 14th. So, okay, so that's, that's even better than the trifecta. Amen? Amen. So again, we are just so uh, grateful for you all to be here with us today and to also let you know that we are in the process of, don't worry, we're not in trouble. 
uh, that we are uh, indeed celebrating um, Black History Month. Um, not necessarily that we're um, relegating Black History to one month, but um, it is, we want to make sure that we recognize it specifically in the month of February. So um, I'm excited to let everybody know that we have, um, uh, we're going to be doing uh, some, uh, what you could say, we're going to be doing a few things in Black, uh, Black History Month to celebrate um, the history of African Americans, uh, people of um, African descent, um, Africans, a number of things um, during this period of time. And we have uh, a few presentations. We have a special uh, TikTok. All right, we, we did we did uh, a high tech here, and I, and I haven't seen it purposely because I want to enjoy it all with you to, uh, to, uh, together. And the um, I don't know if you call it the author or or the creator of the TikTok video is our own brother uh, Javen Bailey. So we will be playing that each time um, in, in preparation for our service, followed by some other. Uh, some other opportunities to celebrate um, Black history. So I just wanted to uh, pre give you a preview so that you don't walk away from your uh, screen uh, before you uh, uh, see all that we have in store for us today. But with that said, to get us in the, in the uh, moment, because I'm already there, but we are going to open up with praise and worship. Amen.
Amen. Um, again, before we begin uh, this wonderful opportunity to hear um, and to see the creation of our brother, uh, David uh, Bailey, uh, with his TikTok video, um, I just want to remind everyone that today is a communion Sunday. So um, for those who are with us online, I want to make sure that um, at some time you uh, look in your covers or your refrigerator, um, grab a, a piece of bread, um, uh, some uh, grape juice, and you'll have grape juice, uh, water, or whatever type of um, fruit of the vine that you can find. Um, if you choose wine, that's okay with me too. Um, but I just want to make sure that we have that in preparation. And also, again, just want to let everybody know that you are indeed welcome to uh, come and uh, worship with us each and every Sunday um, from 11 o'clock until we finish, uh, as well as on Wednesday nights where we have um, Wednesday night Bible study from 7 to 8 o'clock. And um, in order to prepare us for service, we, uh, we also have Sunday school, which is indeed a blessing because not only is it about friendship, but a number of churches that come together where we can talk and learn about God's word. Um, so during the service where the preaching is going on, we, we oftentimes don't have an opportunity to, um, you, you don't have an opportunity to uh, ask questions and so forth, but when you have a Sunday school and Bible study, you can ask questions, you can go deep, you can um, share experiences of, of how the word of God applies to your life so that we not invite you um, as well as others to come out and worship with us. Um, again, before we get to uh, Brother uh, David, uh, we want to open up um, the opportunity for testimony. Um, we are in a uh, period where it seems like every um, every day we're hearing that someone has gone on to be with the Lord, um, and, and we'll have it uh, more so in our um, prayers for the people. But um, uh, one of our sister churches um, up, up the road, uh, Damascus United Methodist Church, um, their um, uh, poor pastor. Um, uh, uh, past, past B, uh, uh, Pastor Sharon Benjamin um, lost his father uh, last week. So we just want you to um, keep him in prayer and his family and so forth. He has always been um, a friend of friendship along with um, um, all of the masses United Methodist Church. And we just want to keep them all in prayer. Um, but now we have an opportunity to participate um, Unlike uh, where you have many churches where pretty much you sit and be quiet, but here you have an opportunity to um, express how God has blessed you. Um, and we are um, we're going to take the time and the opportunity to ask that if God has placed something on your heart where you want to share a testimony, you can put it in the chat or you can mute yourself and share um, with each other what has God, what God has done for you, primarily because of it. The testimony is not necessarily about you, but about others, because as you share your testimony, you are blessing others to let, let everyone know that God is still in the blessing business. So if you have a testimony, this is your opportunity to give God glory, honor, and praise. I know um, ah, we already got one popping in like popcorn. Uh, <laughs> Sister Julia, if you could uh, step a little bit closer and um, give your testimony so that we can all rejoice. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Um, Thank you, church. Um. You got to move. You got to move. You got to move, child. You got to move.
Good morning, church. Can everyone hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, good. Okay, my screen appeared to have frozen for a moment. I apologize for that. Um, I just want to say good morning to church. Um, at first, giving honor to God and our pastor. I'm kicking off Black History Month um, with a segment on voting rights. And I wanted the church to know that it's important um, to, for everyone to know that there's a storm brewing right now. It's leading to a call for world prayer to make our voices heard and letting the opposition know that the devil is a liar. Many of us have turned on to the news and inform us that the GOP have begun to take measures to successfully sway the election in their favor. There's gerrymandering, districting, and uh, voter suppression going on at a rapid pace. Because of this, you know, my mind just began racing. I'm just that type of person. When something's wrong, my mind just raced so much. And I just wanted, you know, to know that there was some fairness that would prevail over evil. So I prayed to God, and I wanted just to pray that he would settle my mind and help me to focus. So knowing that this is Black History Month, I turned on my TV to search for Black history stories or movies. And I stumbled upon the movie Selma. I'm sure many of you can remember that movie. Um, it's excellent. So the scene is from the mid-60s. And during that time, MLK had gathered people of all races to march for the right to vote. Many people died and or shed blood to fight for this right. One of the most interesting parts of this movie was when Dr. King led a large um, group of people again and again. And, and, and although the people heard the police telling other officers to stand down, MLK stopped. He bowed down on his knees and prayed for guidance from God. I can just imagine that the message from God must have been, turn your people around and stay in prayer. Because shortly after that, and those of us old enough to remember um, were able to witness the passage of the voting rights in 1965. And that just reminds us that through God, all things are possible. We must use our power to vote in every election. And remember that every election is important, whether it's local, school board, Senate, and presidential, to name a few. Let's all calm the storm and join in world prayer on March 4th for a peaceful and fair election year. Get out and vote. And we should have a video to follow this. Thank you. Amen. When American revolutionaries established a new government based on the sovereignty of the people, it was truly a radical idea. The power of the nation was not entrusted to a monarchy, but to its citizens. Each generation since continues to debate and shape this bold experiment. The Smithsonian's exhibition, Voices and Votes, Democracy in America, explores questions sparked by that revolution. Who are the people? Whose voice will be heard? How do we spark participation? And what are the rights and responsibilities of citizens? In late 2019, the Smithsonian went into towns hosting the exhibition to further examine these questions with community members. Although their views are unique and may be different from our own, can we find commonalities and opportunities for conversation? Where do you see yourself in this evolving story of American democracy? Voting gives us a voice in our democracy. It is a powerful tool citizens can use to impact our democracy and our daily lives. The reasons people have for voting, participating in political life, or feeling disengaged with politics are as diverse as our country. Some see it as a civic responsibility. Others go beyond voting and are inspired to run for office, but others choose not to participate because they do not feel represented. What does voting mean to you? Marlene Bastien's experience under a repressive Haitian dictatorship made her grateful for the rights she found in America, especially voting. Although excited to vote, her first time going to the polls was not positive, but the experience only motivated her to help others recognize the importance of voting. 
and um, I was uh, disappointed by what happened, and um, and then I, I I was one of the, the the witnesses to testify about some of the efforts that were being made to prevent me and others from voting. Uh, lines of people shouting insults at us while we tried to vote. While we tried to vote. Uh, uh, Fortunately, now people understand better that if they, if when they go vote, they should not let anyone deter them from uh, um, exercising the, the sacred right because voting is a sacred right. And then even now, every day, efforts are being made to to trample uh, and that vote to prevent them from voting. But when I voted the first time, I was extremely excited because uh, for my, the first 22 years in Haiti, I did not have a chance to vote. And then I, I, that's why at our center, we, we give uh, our members information about voting. We train them about how to vote because we believe there is nothing more powerful than the right to vote, the right to exercise your sacred right to vote. And uh, there is no, no power greater than that. Many Americans think their vote will not make a difference. Cody Wyatt of Arkansas works hard to make sure her community members recognize the importance of their voice. And a problem that our community faces when it comes to election time is people just don't care because they think that they get there and no matter what they put on that ballot, they're still going to not get the services they think they deserve or their tax dollars are going to be wasted no matter who's in power. And so if I could just get through to people that they really do matter more than they realize, especially in a small community, when it is those local elections, when you're deciding your mayor and your council people, that that is a bigger impact than on a presidential election. And uh, these are their dollars that they're spending every day at the grocery store and at the gas station. And if they want those tax, tax dollars used appropriately, then they got to vote for the right people. What can be said to someone who feels disenfranchised? Dr. Matthew Whitaker of Arizona focuses on the struggles of those before him and his hope for the future. How do you give people hope who feel disenfranchised? I think one of the main things that I impart to them is that my vote is valuable to me. So I vote because I have an opportunity to do so. I have a vote. And whether I see the at my desired outcome of an election to me is not the most important thing. It's less important to me than knowing that I exercised it. It's mine. And uh, people have suffered and died, particularly my own ancestors, the 246 years of slavery, another 100 years of Jim Crow. They didn't catch all of those backside whoopings and torture and death and dehumanization for me to not exercise this right and this power that, they, that they've given me. And, and, and again, it's not about uh, only valuing it if my woman or my man is elected. It's just the fact that I have that power. And so I think we have to take some of the selfish element out of our franchise. We need to be selfish in the sense that it's ours and we need to value it. Each one of us has that opportunity. But our casting it and our hope for our democracy is not about us. It's about a belief that in doing this, we are doing the right thing. And in the process, through lots of ups and downs, we will continue this forward march. Do you feel voting gives you a voice? Tell a story about what voting means to you. Share your story with a friend. Search for other Voices and Votes programs in your community. Or talk back to the Smithsonian by visiting museumonmainstreet.org and let us hear your story.
Good morning, church. I will be reading today's scripture, Matthew 12, um, 33 to 37, the New Living Translation Version. A tree is identified by its fruit. If a tree is good, its fruit will be good. If a tree is bad, its fruit will be bad. You brood of snakes, how could evil men like you speak what is good and right? For whatever is in your heart determines what you say. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. And I tell you this, you must give an account on judgment day for every idle word you speak. The words you say will either acquit you or condemn you. The word of God for the people of God. On you. If when you give the best of your service, telling the world the Savior is coming, don't be dismayed when men won't believe you. He'll understand and he'll say, well done. If when you try and failed in your trying, and sore and scarred from the work you've begun, just take up your cross and run swiftly to meet him. He'll understand and he will say, well, well done. Misunderstood, the savior of sinner hung on the cross. He was God's only son. Hear him now call to his father in heaven. Not my will, but thy be, be done. Oh, when I come to the end of my journey, Weary of life and the battle is won. Carrying the staff and the cross of redemption. I don't know how you feel about it, but he'll understand. And he'll say. Well done, well done. Come on, help me. Well done. I want to hear him say, Well done. I got that. Well, well done. Oh, my God.
Amen. Apologize. Apologize. Uh, <laughs> as I was saying, <laughs> I want to thank all of those who have um, been participating with us in worship service thus far. Uh, Brother Lewis with this uh, prayer, uh, Brother Javen with the TikTok, Sister, uh, Sister Cecilia um, with the uh, Black History Moment in reference to uh, voting, um, all those who participated in our testimonies. Uh, Sister Ursula for reading the scripture, and all those who are here, uh, I am just so grateful for each and every one of you. And of course, uh, uh, my uh, significant other, Sister Tracy, for making sure that uh, when I'm talking and we're muted, that she lets us know that we should unmute ourselves. So again, I'm just so grateful for each and every one of you and all that you contribute to the service. So with that said, getting on to my Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, as always, I am humbled and thankful for another opportunity to proclaim the word of God and to be in the house of the Lord just one more time on this Sunday morning. Um, I, I want to, uh, again, give my greetings to all of those who, of you who are with us in person, as well as those who are with us um, in our virtual congregation. But today, uh, today, I declare in the name of Jesus that there is a word from the Lord. There's a word from God for each and every one of us on this communion, Black History Month, and the week before Super Bowl Sunday. Today, we will begin a discussion on a, on a number of topics regarding the heart that will carry us into our Lenten season. And as we discuss these issues regarding the heart, I want us to look introspectively regarding an issue that has been plaguing us since the fall in the garden until now. I want us to consider all that has been going on within our society, particularly for the last several years. And if you just Google what are the main issues that we have in American society today um, that, that's going on today, uh, people would say uh, that the major problems that we have are um, toxic politics, um, um, health care, hunger, immigration, um, broken families, education, voting rights. We talk about that violence and the environment. And many of us will say, well, well, well Pastor Newman, I agree with that list, but I think the problems are actually a little bit deeper because those are the symptoms of a more deeply rooted problem. The problems of hate, greed, racism, sexism, and selfishness. But I would care offer if, if we went just to go a little bit deeper, I would have to say to really get to the heart of the matter. I would argue that the primary issue is due to a spiritually sick and sin-filled heart. So I believe many of the problems of the world that were mentioned are rooted to having a bad heart that over time have manifested into problems that were previously mentioned because we ignored the first telltale uh, symptoms that would happen to all of us as toddlers. Now, some of us beginning at the, the ages of 10 through 14 months, and, and if you can't remember the first time you spoke, think about your grandkids, your nieces, your nephews, siblings, or, or, or your God children, when, when those first words that came out of their mouth that began to express what was truly going on in their heart. See, many of us can recall the first time you watched a child fall out in the grocery store or in the mall Screamed in defiance by saying the word, no. This one word led to the opportunity to verbally express the will of the child's heart. That would eventually evolve over time into a more diverse vocabulary that expressed in further detail what is truly going on in the heart of people that again was primarily verbal. But today people are more inclined to express what is on their heart in video. Today, it's no longer just about what you said or what you emailed, what you tweeted, texted, and posted that expresses what truly is going on in the heart. See, the evolution of expressing one's heart has led to social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Javen, TikTok. See, these forums allow people to say pretty much what they want at all times of the day to the entire world, and the entire world often to their own detriment. Why? Because now people around the entire world have access to what you just said and can now express what is on their heart by commenting positively or negatively, by liking you 
or giving you the thumbs down. People can now troll you because they have nothing better to do. Well, based on what you have said, things can, can be, in essence, made worse in some respect because if people like you, they just may follow you. Now you will feel more inclined to talk from the heart because what happens is the cycle repeats itself because in order to increase your followers, you've got to have some more to say. you got to express more things that are going on in your heart so that people can comment. And then what, what happens is uh, 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 over, over the period of time, what we have is a nation of followers of people who may have troubled hearts. It's often said only three, type, three types of people will tell the truth. Kids, the drunk, and the angry. And if you would allow me to add a few more people, I'll say people will tell the truth when they think no one is listening. People will tell the truth when they think the microphone is off. People will tell the truth when they don't think they will get caught or, or, or their words will be kept in confidence. People will tell you the truth when they are among those who look and think like that. People will tell you the truth when they believe they will not be held accountable for what they just said. And I believe if you let people talk long enough, they will eventually tell you who they are. It was on March 11, 2021. During the Norman High School uh, girls basketball game against Midwest City, I made inappropriate and racist comments, believing that the microphone was off. However, let me say immediately that there's that, that no excuse for such comments that have never been uttered, he said in the statement. I have not only embarrassed and disappointed myself, I have embarrassed and disappointed my family and friends. And in an attempt to offer an explanation, this gentleman said that his diabetes will sometimes cause him to say hurtful things. And the gentleman goes on to say, I will state that I suffer from type 1 diabetes and during the game, my sugar was spiked. While not excusing my remarks, it is un it's not unusual that when my sugar spikes, that I become disoriented and often say things that are not appropriate as well as hurt. I do not believe that I would have made such horrible statements absent my sugar spike. And the announcer went on to say that he was not a racist and apologized for his comments. October 11, 2021, in numerous emails during a seven-year period ending in 2000, uh, early 2018, a prominent NFL coach criticized the NFL commissioner and the league for trying to reduce concussions and said that a particular player who had been um, uh, uh, peacefully demonstrating on the field during the national anthem should be fired. In several instances, he also used homophobic slurs to refer to the commissioner and offensive language to describe some, some of the NFL owners, coaches, and journalists who cover the league. In response to the release of these emails, he, uh, the, the, this, this coach said, I have Resign. I'm resigning as coach and do not want to be a distraction. Thank you to all the players, coaches, staff, and fans. I'm sorry. I never meant to hurt anyone. December 15, 2021, the Lafayette City Court judge confirmed the footage was filmed in her home this weekend after the video surfaced capturing people repeatedly saying a racist slur while watching security footage of a failed burglary, burglary over the weekend. The judge, who was elected to the bench just more than a year ago, also said she hasn't slept since the burglary and does not remember the racist language captured in the video. I was given a sedative at the time of the video. I have zero recollection of the video and the disturbing language used during it. Anyone who knows me and my husband knows this is contrary to the way we live our lives. We ask for your understanding, forgiveness, patience, and prayers. And lastly, January 24, 2022, a gentleman can be heard on the video shouting obscenities and derogatory and racial slurs. The employees asked him to leave the property as he grew more irate. He, he is seen throwing a full smoothie 
at the employee before the police were called. And he said, my actions at this smoothie establishment were wrong and I deeply regret them. And the gentleman said, they do not reflect my values or my character. I feel terrible that I lost my composure so completely. And the gentleman said that he returned to the smoothie establishment to determine what ingredients were in the smoothie uh, that he ordered earlier that day, that day and made the comments because his 17-year-old son has suffered from a life-threatening anaphylactic shock. Rarely do you hear someone admit that, yes, I'm a racist, sexist, bigot, or I behave like an ignorant jerk. People will make an excuse and blame matters of the, uh, uh, of the heart on a number of outside forces and circumstances, or even the words of Flip Wilson, the devil made me do it. Made me say it. <laughs> because regardless of what I said or did, I'm still a good person. Rather than admit to themselves and, and others that they are in need of help to address the serious problems that are going on within their hearts. Friendship, today I want to again, as we go into a new series titled Matters of the Heart. Matters of the Heart. Again, we thank Sister uh, Ursula for uh, reading the scripture. Um, but again, I'll read it again for those who may have logged in a little bit late. Uh, coming from the book, from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12, verses 33 through 37, reading from the New Living Translation. And the word of God says, a tree is identified by its fruit. If a tree is good, its fruit will be good. If a tree is bad, its fruit will be bad. You brood of uh, snakes, how could evil men like you speak what is good and right? But whatever is in your heart determines what you say. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a, of a good heart, and an evil uh, person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. And I tell you this, you must give an account on judgment day for every idle word you speak. The words you will say, the words you say will either acquit you or condemn you. Let us pray. Our Father, our God, Lord, we are just so grateful what our eyes have heard and what, um, our, what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard from this point thus far. Again, Lord, we are um, we are strapping ourselves in so that you can speak to us plainly. We are prepared to hear something that may be hard for us to understand or even to accept. Speak to our hearts, Lord, that we may be able to change uh, reveal the things that we think are good in us that you see that are not so. And if, Lord, there's somebody here that, that, that does not have a relationship with you, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would um, soften their heart. Lord, we pray that if someone um, is going through some trials and tribulation and they, and they have a hard heart, Lord, we pray that you would relieve their heart. Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you would speak to each and every person and that everyone is willing to open their heart to hear what, what you would have for them to say on this morning. And we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading today, coming from the Gospel of Matthew, is where we catch Jesus in a moment of righteous frustration. It is in this moment Jesus feels compelled to give the Pharisees a piece of what is going on in his sanctified heart. It is in this, the, the, this part of the gospel uh, in, in chapter 12 after multiple interactions of the Pharisees testing, challenging, and as my grandmother would say, picking with Jesus. Jesus and the disciples were minding their business walking through the grain fields when the Pharisees showed up as the first Karens of the world and said, look, your disciples are breaking the law by harvesting grain on the Sabbath. You know you are not supposed to be eating in the fields without a permit on the Sabbath. And Jesus basically told them to mind their business because I have authority over the Sabbath because I am its author. Then Jesus went to church. 
and saw a man with a deformed hand and the Pharisees showed up and said, you, 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 you know you are not supposed to heal people today. And Jesus said, look, it's okay to do things, good things or, or, or for somebody on the Sabbath. And, and so he healed the man. And, 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 and when they healed him, uh, it angered the hearts of the Pharisees who after that began a plot and plan on how they intended to kill Jesus. There is something wrong with your heart when you get mad about someone receiving help or blessing. There is something wrong with your heart when you are incapable of minding your own business and have a desire to mess with folk for no good reason. That, there's a, something wrong in your heart when you have a desire to kill someone who disagrees with you. you when, when someone is in your neighborhood or someone doesn't look like you or, or, or something, uh, or they don't speak the same language, there is something wrong that's going on in your heart. There's something wrong with your heart when you can kill people because you want what they have and, or you are having a bad day or, or because you dislike um, yourself. So you go out and plan to kill a whole mess of people. There's something going on that's wrong in your heart. And in chapter 12, regardless of what they were planning, planning for Jesus, he still was focused on what was on his heart, which was to save and serve the broken people. And in chapter 12, beginning at verse 22, Jesus healed another man, a man who was demon-possessed. And, and, and then again, the Karens, I, I, I mean, the Pharisees showed up and said the only reason Jesus was able to heal this demon-possessed man was because Jesus himself was demonic. And I believe this is what the, 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 this is where the uh, uh, the straw broke the camel's back. And Jesus said, uh, uh, "Enough is enough." Uh, and, and, and he said, "I I, I can't stand any uh, what was it Popeye or something? That, that's all I can stand because I can't stand no more." So, somebody know about that cartoon? <laughs> um, um, and, and it was at this time Jesus said, "Let me tell you a little bit of something." Jesus and Satan have two different agendas. Jesus does not report to Satan, but he only reports to God the Father. Jesus said, watch what I say, watch what I do, and my fruits and my good works will speak for themselves and vice versa. But, but let me tell you about an evil person. See, an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. And he said, I tell you this, you must give an account on judgment day for every idle word that you speak. The words you will say will either acquit you or condemn you. And I believe Jesus was saying in a not so subtle way, if I were you, I would be quiet now. Because you are on your way of saying something you will not be able to talk your way out. I healed the man. And some, some people may call me the great physician. But Jesus said, I got a whole lot of other jobs. He said, because I'm also a lawyer. And I want to give you some free legal advice. You have the right to remain silent. And anything you say can and will be used against you in the heavenly court of law, where my father is the judge. You, you have the right to an attorney. That's not going to help you. And if you cannot afford an attorney, that's just too bad. Now, do you understand the rights I have just read to you? And now that I have explained the rights to you, do you still have more? that you need to say. And that which my Jesus dropped that metaphorical mic, this text tells us that Jesus is making it clear that he knows the source of inauthentic words. Jesus wanted them to know not only could he read, read minds, but he can read what is going on in the heart. Jesus proves correctly that words do matter and that we all, somebody say all, somebody Zoom check all, all will be held responsible 
for every word that proceeds out of our mouth, which may be a cause of concern for those of us who especially love to talk. <laughs> How many of us have said, I lashed out because I was angry? And, and, and I didn't really mean what I said. I, I was just talking. It was only words not realizing that we are going to be held accountable for every word that comes out of our mouth. And even if what we may say according to the standards of the world are, uh, may not be considered outlandish, scandalous, or even outrageous because we are just shooting the breeze, spilling the tea, catching up what's going on, uh, uh, catching up on what's going down. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, and, and casually discussing the word on the streets, we, we are still being held accountable by God. How many of us have ever considered if our words contributed to someone feeling bullied, discriminated, uh, someone who actually committed suicide or had a broken relationship because of something that we said? And when we get to the source of the issue of why something tragic happened, the primary question is, what did you say? What did they say? And because we don't think about what we say or, or, or our retort is, well, well I, I, I just said, I didn't even mean anything about it. How many times in a point of self-reflection uh, uh, that you caught yourself saying something you should have said and you look in the mirror and you even ask yourself, why the heck did I just say that? Every, somebody say every, somebody Zoom check every. every. Every word that comes out of our mouth, we will be held accountable, which will either convict or quit. story. In a small town somewhere in Eastern Europe lived a nice man with a nasty problem. He talked too much about people. He could not help himself. Whenever he heard a story about somebody he knew and sometimes about somebody he did not know, he just had to tell it to his friends. Since he was in the business, he, he heard quite a lot of rumors and stories. He loved the attention he got and was delighted when they laughed because of the way he told his, uh, his, his stories, which he sometimes embellished with little detail, I think, little detail, and he invented to make them funnier and juicier. Y'all know about that, man. Other than that, he was really a good-hearted man. He kind of knew it was wrong, but too tempting. You, you know you get something, you lie, I gotta tell, gotta tell somebody. But, but in any case, most of us, most of what he told really happened. See, it's not gossip, if it's true, is it? I'm not saying, man. <laughs> Many of his stories were just innocent and entertaining, weren't they? And one day he found out something really weird, but it was true about another businessman in town. And of course, he felt compelled to share what he knew with his colleagues who told it to their friends, who told it to people they knew, who told it to their wives, who told it to their friends and their friends, and, and, and all of them. Y'all know who all of them is. And eventually went around town to the unhappy businessman who was the main character of the story heard about. He ran into the rabbi. And well, to complain that he was rude. And nobody would like to deal with him after this. His good name and his reputation were gone with the wind. And his rabbi knew his customers, so, 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 so to speak, and, and he decided to summon the man who loved to tell stories. And, and, and if he was not the one who started them, he figured he knew who did. See, this nice man with nasty problem heard from the rabbi um, how devastated his colleague was, and he actually felt sorry for what happened. He honestly had not considered it such a big deal to tell, tell the story because it was true. The rabbi could check it out if he wanted the rabbi's side and said, true or not true, what difference does it make? 
You just can't come going on telling stories about people. This is um, uh, the uh, I guess the Hebrew for it is this is Ashan Hara slam. And it's like murder. You are killing a person's reputation. He said a lot more, and then the man started the rumor. Now he felt really bad and sorry. Um, and, and he said, what can I do to make this right? How can I um, fix this? Um, and, 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 and he said, he said, I will do anything that you say. The rabbi looked at him and said, do you have any feathers? Uh, a feather pillow in your house. And Rabbi, and we said, Rabbi, I, I, I'm a poor man. I, I, I'm not poor. I, I got a whole lot of uh, uh, um, pillows with, with feathers. I got a whole bunch. And he said, well, what would you want me to do? You want me to sell them? I, I, can, I can sell them, whatever. He said, no, just bring me one. Just bring me one. Said, one pillow. I, I, okay. So, so he came back to the rabbi, and, and he had a nice, fluffy pillow. He gave it to the rabbi, and the rabbi took out a knife told the man to cut the uh, pillow open. And the rabbi said, okay, uh, all right, it's, it's a little messy here, but okay. And he said, all right, just do, just do what I asked you. He said, okay, now, as the, 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 the feathers began to come out the pillow, they landed in the chairs, and they were starting to get all over the place, and it was floating and, and so forth. And, 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 and next thing you know, it was just a, kind of a big mess. And the rabbi waited a few minutes. And he, ordered, he took the, told the man, he said, now bring me all the feathers. And all the stuff back and put them in the pillow. All of it. Not one. The man looked at the rabbi and said, Rabbi, I can't put all this stuff back. He said, It's impossible. He said, I might get most of them, but if you notice, you had the window open and some flew out the window and they're gone, and I, I don't even know where they went. I can't do this, and you know I can't. The rabbi looked at him and said, yeah, that's how it is when one rumor starts. One story gets told. A secret gets spilled. And it comes out of your mouth because when it comes out of your mouth, you don't know where it's going to be. And as it flies out the window, you can't get it back. So he ordered the man to deeply apologize to the person who he had spread the rumor that, that, that it, it was difficult, it was painful, but that was all that he could do. And he ordered him to apologize, not just to him, but to all the people that he told the story to, making them accomplices in the nasty Lashan Hara slam. And he ordered him to diligently study the laws concerning Lashan Hara every day for a year and then come back to him. Now, this story we may have heard, have heard different iterations of it, but it's often talk, uh, uh, talked about in reference to the dangers of slander and spreading rumors and so forth. But I believe the primary issue was what was going on in the man's heart when he told those stories, when he felt the, the need to desire to spread rumors at the expense of others. And the problem about today's society is once you put out what is going on in your heart, it's possible that it will be used against you in the future. See, the silly things that you posted five years ago may actually come back to bite you. In 1985, there was a song by a group went by the name of Run DMC. They sang about people who simply talk too much. They said, hey, you over there, I know about your kind. You're like an independent network on News Channel 9. Everywhere that you go, no matter where you at, I said you talk about this, and you talk about that. When the cat took your tongue, I say you took it right back. Your mouth is so big, one bite can kill a Big Mac. You talk too much. Never shut up. I said you talk too much. Oh, boy. Never shut up. <laughs> Many of us have made the declaration that when we said or done something wrong, we often respond with, well, God knows my heart. Not realizing that maybe something we should not be too excited about declaring. 
Because for some, or if not even many, it may be something that we should actually fear that God knows our home. Today, I believe we live in such a toxic environment filled with many people who do not realize that they have a heart problem. I mean, how can you fix a problem that you believe you don't even have? And as I stated earlier, we keep trying to address the symptoms rather than identifying and addressing the root of the problem, which is found in the heart. In 1972, there was a brother who went by the name of Al Green who also identified the problems of a broken heart and proceeded to ask a number of questions. Brother Al said, how can you mend a broken heart? How can you stop the rain from falling? How can you stop the sun from shining? What makes the world go round? How can you mend this broken man? How can a loser ever win? Please help me mend my broken heart and let me live again. And I believe when he made that last declaration of please help me mend my broken heart and let me live again, there was a cardiologist that stepped up and said, I can not only answer all your questions, but I can do something about it. Somebody say amen. The, the, the prophet Jeremiah testified on behalf of that cardiologist who many of us know as the great physician who said, I, the Lord, test the minds and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruits of their doings. If you do not, if you do your research not too long after asking these questions, that great physician changed the work on Al, on Brother Al Green so much so that he eventually became a pastor. And today we know him as the Reverend Al Green because God was able to mend his broken heart. There is someone here today with a broken heart, and if that is you, I want you to pray with me right now. Our Father and our God, Lord, we are just so grateful for what you have shown us today. Many of us have been walking around with blinders on, thinking that it's always somebody else, but not them. But you today, you said, we understand as we look at our hearts and say, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that if there is anybody out here with a broken heart, that you would fix it, that you would mend it, that you would change it to a heart that represents you. Many of us go about spouting things, not realizing the damage that we have that, that we have um, uh, placed on people, Lord, because it wasn't what we said, but what came out of our heart and showed um, what's going on in us internally. So, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that if there's anybody out here that is dealing with the issue of the heart, which should be all of us, Lord, that you would Get us to that right um, um, place. Lord, we heard even in our Sunday school this morning how David had a problem as, 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 as he uh, committed murder and adultery and all those things. And what he realized in Psalm 51 is that it wasn't the sin, but it was um, the, the, that he had a, a issue with that was going on in his heart and he needed God to come in and fix it. Lord, we just thank you for us to a place where we may be able to hear some, some tough things that, that are going on about us. Again, we like to all think that we are good people, Lord, but you know that the word says that the heart is um, desperately wicked and you can know it. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity for you to speak to us. We ask in the name of Jesus to uh, into the direction that you have us to Lord, literally, please bless our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are at a point of the service where I need for everybody to understand, um, not quite yet. <laughs> um, if you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, but somehow God pricked your heart. We're going to ask that you come. Again, we are not in quote unquote 
normal times where somebody would say, I'm going to, uh, I'll wait till I get to church to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. We're not in those times. We're in different times. What we are saying that for, for, for us, for, for us all to understand is that you can accept Jesus Christ no matter where you are. You can be online right now, sitting in your living room or your kitchen or in your den, wherever that may be, and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Right now. If that is you, I'm going to ask that you soften your heart and let Jesus come. I'm going to ask that again, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're online, I want you to unmute yourself or say in the chat, I want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now, not, not because um, that has to happen, because all you have to do is accept Jesus in your uh, uh, the heart and believe, and, and you will be saved, but we want you to testify amongst the saints of God um, so that we can pray for you as God um, does a new thing in your heart. If that is you, take the time to do it while you can. Again, it seems like literally every week someone is dying. Someone is leaving this earth. Someone is um has made it to the next day. Don't assume that you can wait if that is you. Not hard in your heart to receive Jesus Christ one day. Again, if we have, if, 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 if those who are alive, the saints who are alive, um, their heart is right with God, don't stop there saying, I'm good. Um, you know, whatever for everybody else, I want you to pray on their behalf that um, they will be willing to receive Jesus Christ in the Lord and Savior. Second call. I want to make sure that there are people out there who have a relationship with Jesus Christ. They and they say, they say, Pastor, my heart is good. Um, me and God are on the right page, but right now we don't have a church home. I do my Bible study alone. I, I, I pray alone and so forth. I, I do all these things. And what you will learn is you can't do this by yourself. There are going to be times when you're going to be um, hurting. There are going to be times when you want to be lifted up. There are going to be times when you need to pour into somebody else. And you cannot. And, and, and the best place to do it is to have a place that you can call home. Somewhere where people are praying for you, somewhere where, 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 where people can say, um, what can I do for you? A place where you can use the gifts that God has given you. Look into your heart and not saying, I got mine, but what can I give for somebody else? If, you're, if you don't have a church home, you're saying, well, I don't live in the Damascus area. Well, we got a whole lot of people who don't even live remotely close to Damascus, but they're part of the family. This is hot. Sister Hobbs is in uh, is in Delaware. Hey Amen. She she can't just roll up the friendship uh, real quick, but she's a part of the family. And we have another a number of other people. Uh, Sister Ursula, she in North Carolina. She ain't taking that four or five hour ride to uh, our friendship. She's part of the family. We are in a different space where God's kingdom is not limited by the, by, by the walls and the roof of a church, the church building. We are all family united on a virtual um, platform. And if we're able to see one another, that's awesome. If you're looking for a church home and God is um, uh, pressing your heart and saying, I think this is where you need to be right now. As I've said before, just because God calls you here does not mean that God may have you here for the rest of your life. This is where God wants you right now. If that is you, we're going to ask that you raise your hand or put in the chat and say, I think I want to be a part of Friendship uh, the, the, uh, Friendship United Methodist Church. I, I, I want to join. I, I don't know what I need to do. Hey, give me a call. Um, if there's somebody that you already know online so, um, that, that's part of Friendship, and we will get you um, and, and pray you into the fellowship because God has a place where you need. Lastly, I would like to say that, that in the event that you are um, 
who are a former member of friendship kind of fell off. Somehow somebody sent you a link and found yourself uh, back, back here. He said, wow, I haven't been online in, two, in a year. I, I didn't even know you guys. I can church closed down. I, I didn't know you were doing virtual services and so forth. And, and what we're saying is, wow, we, we, we wish uh, you wouldn't have lost uh, contact, but we were still a part of the uh, fellowship. We want to welcome you back in so that we can reunite and have you moving in the direction that God has called you. If that is you, raise your hand, say in the chat, or you have to mute yourself, say, Pastor, um, after the service, I think we need to talk. Do it while you can. Do not harden your heart. Amen. So at this time, we are transitioning to our communion portion of the service. I'm going to think of it out. I don't think it, 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 uh, it's not a better time as we consider what's going on in our heart, especially during the time of communion. If you have not had the opportunity, I would ask again if you can quickly run to your uh, cupboard or, or your refrigerator, grab a piece of bread, uh, uh, some wine, some water, uh, some juice, um, so that we can all participate in the movement together. Just give me 30 seconds just to uh, roll. I try to attempt to open my community. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm going to pray that God has led us to where we have all that we need to participate in communion uh, and worship together. We participate in communion as, a, as we declare our faith and testify to Jesus as a Christ as Lord and Savior. We participate in communion as an act of worship in remembrance of the life and teachings of Jesus Christ as the source of our soul salvation. We participate in communion as an expression of our relationship to Christ and to each other. And now may the God of peace who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with every good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing in him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy man will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of the Lord. Therefore, let a person examine themselves. To the reference to the heart. That in so eat of the bread and drink of the cup, for anyone who eats and drinks without uh, discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself or herself. Again, meaning before you participate in communion, take the time to examine your heart and understand the importance and purpose of communion so that this act of worship is not taken away. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, Lord, we just thank you for, again, this time of communion. We ask, Lord, that as we prepare, that you would bless uh, the, 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 the bread and the, the cup, that it may be received with thanksgiving. Lord, let us keep a mind and a heart to understand that everything that we're doing today is in obedience as well as in uh, thankfulness for what you've done by dying on the cross for our sins. Jesus' name we pray. And on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he sat down with the twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he, until he comes. So he took the bread. And he broke it. 
He said, this is the body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So likewise, let us see. In the same way also, took a cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. So likewise, let us drink. so grateful again for what you have experienced in this time of communion. We pray that everything that was done here was done to your satisfaction and it was done with thanksgiving. We pray Lord, that you bless our hearts, that you guard our hearts and you protect our hearts from those things that are not of you. Amen. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, so likewise let us go out where God is calling us to go with a song in our heart Proclaiming to the world, I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died on the cross, and I know it was the blood for me. Thank you, God bless you, and thank you for worshiping with us. Amen. <laughs>